Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, it was nice to see you all and I hope uh, I, I hope to give you something meaningful in this one hour uh, where you would feel comfortable developing a cross-platform mobile application uh, using something called Roam Mobile. Uh, so the agenda is going to be like this. Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys are comfortable seeing this place. Should I, should I go for that? Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, so the agenda is like, uh, we will have a look at jQuery Mobile and, and I will try to give an introduction about roads and then uh, get into some demos and a little bit code walkthrough. Um, and then uh, I'll show how we use Pro Mobile for our mobile application called Sage Back to Good and, and then go some with the question. Uh, so just about myself, I'm Balaji. Uh, D. Loganadan, which is my dad name, and I'm founder of a software company called Sprightly Software, which is like three years old and uh, it's located in Saligram, Chennai, uh, near Hadaparani area. And uh, I have worked in Switzerland, I have worked in Australia and Singapore. Uh, I have done my master's from Australia and then I have done my PE instrumentation from Anamal University. Sidambaram, so if there is anyone from Anamal University, I would be happy to meet. Uh, so basically, Sprightly Software is a Sennai based company we, uh, which develops web applications using Ruby on Rails and then more recently mobile applications uh, using Pro Mobile platform. Uh, we believe we are doing good uh, when it comes to Ruby on Rails because uh, most of the project we have done uh, were at enterprise level handling. Uh, performance bottleneck and things and so on. Uh, okay, let me jump into the topic, uh, the actual topic. Um, so many of you already know, like there are many native programming languages available to uh, develop uh, every every mobile platform. Uh, for example, you know, like for Apple, we have Objective-C, for Android, we got Java and, and so on. So, so basically there are several, several languages. Uh, before I jump in, um, if there is any iOS or Android or uh, any mobile application developer, oh, that's nice. Uh, so you are iOS or Android. 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 Nice. Android. Okay. Um, so that's nice. Um, okay. Basically, there are like many, uh, like many native applications, native mobile applications. Uh, there are. That there is something called mobile web framework. Some of you might be aware of, like uh, jQuery Mobile, JQ Mobi, and then Sensor Touch and JQ Touch, and so on. What this basically does is um, it helps you to display your website on your mobile phone, on your mobile compatible phone, uh, mobile compatible view. That's all. So it's not going to do uh, big magic behind this. But uh, what the nice thing is trying to give you is, let's say you have. Um, a website uh, for your own company or for your customer and you want to give some extra uh, extra things that you would see in iPhone or, uh, or Android kind, kind of uh, smartphones like uh, flipping, slide up uh, and then uh, all this all this effect which makes iPhone, uh, iPad uh, or, or smartphone uh, different from normal phones. So this kind of effects, this kind of um, look and feel uh, along with the CSS is provided by this framework. Okay. Um, jQuery mobile is quite famous and uh, many websites have adopted it for their mobile view uh, and, and, and then and then next comes the sensor touch. I, I don't know and I, I don't know which is better or which is uh, um, lawyer or something, we just take what we like. So if you ask me which one is good or which one is bad, I have no answer for that. As long, uh, I, I believe if, if you have a team which knows what to do, that's, that technology is good to do to get along with. That's, that's my individual perspective. Um, and then sensor touch, it looks really good. Um, if you happen to see the demo, uh, it's, it's, it's from the look and feel, from the from the interaction perspective and all, is really good. Uh, it's also in very constant development. JQ Touch uh, is, is, I think they are the one who, maybe I'm wrong, they are the one who lead this mobile web framework. Uh, but some maybe sensor touch bottom or I don't know the history. Uh, somehow their development went down, and and then 
jQuery Mobile uh, took the lead, if I am right. Maybe I like jQuery Mobile. And then the fourth one is JQMobi. Uh, how many of you heard about JQMobi? Okay, JQMobi is really good. Uh, I'm not supposed to say that on this topic, but if you, if you, while we are talking about jQuery Mobile, jQMobi is really good in terms of performance. Uh, so we have. Just yesterday we tried a mobile application, a mobile application with JQMobi um, and it's, it's like um, really good especially from Android perspective. In iPhone everything works fine which uh, from a developer's perspective I hate it because when you are developing a cross platform application you believe that things will work, work fine on almost all platforms but then in iPhone it's like this and then in Android it's like this so you have to do further to make things work. which JQMobi trying to avoid uh, the performance is at par. Okay, uh, so some of you may not know what is jQuery Mobile, so it's better I, I make a quick demo of what is jQuery Mobile is like. Um, so, so this is the web, web page of uh, jQuery Mobile. And then you can see on the on the right side like page and dialogues, toolbars, buttons, and things and so on. <coughs> so this is this is basically an, basically an online demo. And let me go to this something called page transition. Uh, I hope people on the back are able to see something. Okay. So let's go to page uh, transition. And then you can see. I don't know. Anyone knows how to adjust or shall we go with this? Okay, let's go with this. So, the green button. The green button. Thanks. So, like a slide and then let's see the flip which is flipping. Uh, this you might have seen in your smartphones uh, applications. And then another thing that we can check is list view uh, content bubble would be nice like pin box with a number like 12 0 4 and so on and then icons uh, you have some image or icon some text and then some something over that um, okay let's let's stay here See, what basically jQuery Mobile does is it helps you by giving you a set of Java, uh, CSS um, CSS and JavaScript so that you can just use it, uh, create a, a line tag, uh, include the JavaScript, include the CSS and that's it. You, you get the view like this on your mobile phone. Okay, so you, you don't need to worry about CSS, JavaScript while you are creating a mobile application. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's the result is, but if you guys feel like asking question, uh, maybe instead of a big discussion, just one question means I would be happy to answer that quickly. Uh, so, does it, uh, when I create my application for mobile, so that means like any form factor, any screen, does it take care of uh, fitting the uh, screen in any, any of my mobile like form factor? Yes. Uh, to, to, uh, I should be very careful on saying yes. Uh, it does at least to 90%. When it comes to BlackBerry or uh, uh, you never know, right? Like iPhone always works. Uh, Android, yes. Uh, BlackBerry, you have to. Okay, Windows Mobile it won't work because Windows Mobile 6.5 doesn't support jQuery. So you have to write your own CSS and. Uh, document dot uh, get element all these things uh, so that's the challenge uh, they, they have the supported platform you can see um, they have this a grade support and things and so on but to, to, to answer your question yes to certain extent okay um, so so if you see basically this this uh, it, it gives you a set of CSS and JavaScript that you can just use it for your web application, sorry, your mobile application. So let me go back to the presentation. Um, okay, this is just a lame uh, difference between uh, mobile web. Uh, yes. I have a quick question. So in 
web application, typically you have a jQuery and a jQuery UI. The jQuery like a dashboard and the UI part is specific for UI. Right. So here, do you have any differentiation like that or is it both merged together? You can compare to an extent like jQuery, jQuery UI, jQuery, jQuery mobile. Uh, but if you, from the raw mobile perspective, but if you take from phone pair perspective, it's also support jQuery UI jQuery mobile plus jQuery UI so you can do uh, a bit more advanced uh, user experience or interactions. So when it comes to jQuery mobile, does it basic, uh, the basic one, does it provide any UI widgets like you mentioned or is it? It, it does provide the oh. UI, yeah. So even without jQuery UI, you can do some yes. basic right. Okay. Uh, mobile web app versus native app. Um, Basic, if you see the most important difference, it's better usability because of device specific. Because, uh, you know, you can, I don't know, maybe in a year time, there may be some JavaScript that can handle the camera, barcode, uh, signature and so on. That's what uh, I have been reading, but I don't know. If you guys have a different opinion, you can correct me. But the biggest difference is native apps, you have access to the device capabilities like uh, NFC, Bluetooth. Uh, camera, barcode, um, I have that list somewhere, I will show you. Um, the, the one thing that, that I would support for mobile web application is it's very easy. Like uh, you, you use some framework like jQuery mobile or jQMobi, uh, something like that and then that's it, you have your web application appearing on your mobile platform, sorry, smartphone platform. Uh, but if you go with native apps, you have to you have to do some additional extra work to get things done. And then platforms like PhoneGap, ProMobile try to reduce this pain and helps you to get things done quickly. Um, um, when you when you develop a mobile web application, uh, a mobile web app, uh, which means you, I mean, basically mobile web app is nothing but you use HTML, CSS maybe HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript to show your web application on your mobile platform. Uh, whereas with the native apps, you compile the application, create uh, iPhone application or Android application, and then you install it to get it uh, viewed on your smartphone application. Um, so that's, that's the, the perspective I have on this. Uh, so basically, why we would need a cross-platform mobile application? Um, like like uh, you, you might have uh, like at least 10 years back or 8 years back the biggest reason why Java was very successful is write, write once and run everywhere. I think that's the, I, I was a Java architect but now I have, I, I, I was lost with Java, uh, it was more than 4 years back. Uh, so that, that line really took me uh, to start loving Java and, and become with kind of fanatic with it. So that same line made, made us to stick with uh, RoboMobile or uh, phone gap kind of uh, cross-platform application. The reason is, the, the simple reason is, let's say uh, you, you are running uh, eBay, you are running eBay and you want to provide uh, eBay application for iPhone, for Android, uh, for Blackberry and then for Windows Phone, Windows Mobile, then uh, and then you want to make use of some native uh, features like barcode or camera or something like that, then you need to have at least five, five Android developers, five iPhone developers, uh, just an example, okay, you base a big team, so five, five could be a very small number. So at the end, you, you would need this many team to manage that particular native application and then uh, and then you can, you can just think about the cost of handling all those things. Uh, so, so the idea is very simple. Instead of uh, me having five different uh, set of teams, let let develop the application with one platform, so that I will I don't need to worry about the maintenance. So that's the basic motivation. And then, and then the big the biggest selling point is single code base. So. Uh, from the single code base means you, you you don't need to have a five set of developers to to handle things. Um, there are many developers, sorry, players in this field. Uh, you can see uh, maybe some of them some of them do native uh, cross-platform native applications. Some just do 
the mobile web app alone, for example, jQuery mobile framework, JQ touch phone gap, accelerator, uh, Corona, Kodi. Um, have anyone used the Kodi? Okay. Uh, I'd love to talk to you after this topic. Uh, I, I found they are, they are very uh, good, probably, at least from the website perspective. Uh, doing trying to handle enterprise level web, public web mobile application um, and then there are many other many other stuff so let's take Ro mobile for today uh, <coughs> okay basically it's a cross-platform mobile application you can use your web skills to write native uh, mobile application which means like uh, yeah, I, I'll be telling you. Uh, and then it's, it's a gem under Ruby. Uh, how many of you know Ruby or Ruby on Rails? Okay. Um, those who don't know uh, Ruby or Ruby on Rails, uh, it is PHP, then a library. The Rhodes is a library. If it is like a Java, then Rhodes is like a JAR file. Uh, for Python, like a library. Okay. So so maybe maybe my comparison is wrong, but for a Ruby. Roads is simply a gem to, to, to get started. And then it follows MVC architecture, which I will explain. Um, some of the nice things about uh, Roads is like uh, you can execute locally, you have access to almost all device capabilities based on the smartphone, and then uh, you can store the data locally. Uh, basically, if you take <coughs> iPhone or Android or um, Blackberry kind of devices, they would be having a mini database, uh, uh, maybe SQLite. I'm not sure about Blackberry, but at least uh, in iPhone they have the mini SQLite database, so you can store the data locally uh, and play with it. Um, and then you can synchronize to enterprise system using Rokanai. So this this is the most important thing, um, which I will which I will explain. Um, and then it got access to <coughs> HTTP where you can consume uh, some JSON or uh, an external API or web services. Um, it officially supports jQuery mobile uh, from the user interface, uh, from the from the UI perspective. Uh, recently, we started exploring JQ Mobi, and then uh, we would be pushing JQ Mobi because it's, it's, it's really fast. Um, <coughs> the platform supported by Romobile includes Blackberry, Windows Mobile, Android and iPhone. Uh, for Android they even support 4.x, the ice cream sandwich and then for iPhone uh, latest iOS 5. Windows Mobile, mm, this one is interesting. Um, Windows Mobile they have like Windows Mobile 6.5 professional and then the latest one is Windows 4 uh, Mango. Windows Phone Mango. So they support Windows Mobile device capabilities to good extent, but not the Windows Mango or Windows Phone. Uh, they are still writing their code to support the device capability. For example, if you want to write an application that would access a camera on your Windows Phone, that is not that is not done yet. Okay. Um, BlackBerry. Um, I I don't know, maybe there are some uh, Blackberry lovers here, but I really don't like Blackberry when it comes to development. From a developer's perspective, it's really painful uh, to, to match the user interface, to get things done and so on. Uh, but maybe Blackberry Playbook is good uh, because it, it has an updated operating system and HTML rendering mechanism, if I am right. Uh, but to, to say this topic, Blackberry does support Blackberry. Uh, okay, before I go to that topic, next topic, I want to show <coughs> some demo.
Okay, I mean, what it does is like, uh, I mean, the screen I started the iPhone device from the RoboBank platform, and then it, it started up this iPhone simulator, uh, and then. Uh, you guys remember I showed page transition on jQuery mobile website. So let's see how it looks. Okay, so I click page transition, and then flip, okay, and then pop, uh, slide up, uh, slide down. Okay, so it's it's, and then theming effects like uh, this one is. Let, let's go E, B, e, C, and so on. So, so when I when I click this E, we get to see a theme of yellow with uh, gradient and all. It's just we have to change a letter theme A to theme C. That's it, and you get to see this effect. Okay, so that's that's the basically we we should worry about the business logic and forget about UI, but it's easy to say, uh, it's not easy to assume. Most of the uh, products these days are very crazy about UI, uh, like it's becoming equal maybe these days, ever since this iPhone and smartphones came, and then because of HTML5 and so on. Uh, list view, uh, I, I just shown you this on the jQuery mobile website and you have the same Thing. I, I wish I would run uh, the same thing on Android. Uh, it's going to take at least one to two minutes even on your new Mac machine, which I feel very sad that I thought, okay, working on your Windows machine would be very slow. Let me buy a Mac and then Mac is again slow. So maybe the, the <coughs> has something to do with the operating system Lion. Uh, okay. Here is the thing, some of you may feel that phone gap is much better or some other uh, remarks like uh, accelerator is much better than Roam mobile because with phone gap if you have JavaScript knowledge, HTML, CSS knowledge, sign up, you get the application done. Um, and then same goes with accelerator along with sensor touch if I am right. What sets Row Mobile apart from, from this framework is they are targeting enterprise applications. Okay. Uh, let's say you are in Chennai Airport. Just watch what the device, uh, the guy is using to scan, uh, scan a package or if you have, some of you might have recently fly with Kingfisher while, while you are waiting on the queue, they will issue the ticket by taking a machine, asking your boarding pass, entering, and then the ticket comes out. Just watch what the device is. Uh, and then you also check what the device that most of the traffic police or the policeman is carrying. Mostly it will be Motorola. Okay. Row Mobile was brought over by Motorola in order to target the enterprise level markets. Okay. So, see, police, uh, policeman carrying the wireless device or the one that you see in the airport, that's a very small set. Let's take a better example. Uh, there is a company, okay, this one, uh, no, Skindler. How many of you know Skindler? It's a lift. Uh, okay, it's a very famous company in uh, Europe. Uh, most of the lift in the buildings are from Skindler. So let's say, I mean, the Skindler is using, they have been using Windows Mobile 6.5 devices to give it to their service engineer so that the service engineer would go do some work, scan something and then come back and so on. So this is, that device is Motorola, the, the operating system behind that is Motorola even though it is Windows Mobile 6.5, okay. And then let you take other industries like RFID, RFID or like uh, goods tracking or shipment tracking. Most of these devices were manufactured by Motorola or Motorola would be behind this. Okay. One of the reason Google bought some part of Motorola is that their domination in the retail industry, retail or manufacturing or enterprise level industries. Okay. So this is very important. If you want to develop application, 
that doesn't interact with camera, barcode, or doesn't have to do with enterprise application, better go with phone cam. Okay, faster and you have more control. But if you are targeting enterprise level companies, then it is better to stick with Romobile because it's like um, these enterprise companies in turn fund Motorola and Motorola fund the development developer team to get things going on and, and, so, and so on. So, okay, one example. This is the recent project we have done using uh, Romobile. Uh, basically, it uses th this one. This device is not out in the market yet. This is an Android ET1 tablet uh, with a Gingerbird operating system, um, and then this is a cat drawer. And I'm, I'm sure many of you have seen this. What it does is, I I I have this device. I I go to a shopping mall, let's say uh, next, and then I scan your washing machine, and then. Uh, obviously, I, everyone likes comparing. Okay, how can I compare Panasonic Panasonic washing machine with the Whirlpool, and then what the cost difference, what the performance difference, and so on. So you do that, and then you make a choice. Like I want this washing machine, I want vacuum cleaner, and then you say pay. Okay, there is some button over here. Either you can pay by swiping the credit card on top of the device, or you can pay using the cat drawer. Press some button, this crack cat drawer will automatically open. So this is one application that we have done using a uh, mobile platform. And this one is like a typical application <coughs> where <coughs> the service engineer takes this device with him, goes and do some uh, maintenance work for a lift or for some equipment. Then he can some passcode. He get the signature from the customer saying, okay, the uh, uh, the repair has been done uh, or corrected something like that so that we have done as you can see this one is uh, iPhone no this is not iPhone uh, I don't know what is this uh, we took the screenshot from Instagram we basically developed it for Android and Windows mobile so this here we learned a lesson while developing Pro mobile the hell of maintaining the CSS for Android and for Windows mobile Windows Mobile 6.5 is a crazy operating system because it doesn't support the cool things that you would be you would be enjoying with uh, already. Uh, so you have to write your uh, JavaScript uh, using document dot get element dot and all these things, uh, basic JavaScript. So that that we have done and came up with this application. Basically Android, uh, iPhone, and then uh, Windows Mobile. There is another project we did. <coughs> Uh, this one is a very simple application for an Australian company, Wincor, Wincor Next Door. You might have seen this, if you go to Reliance these days, you would see the uh, the device uh, would be having the logo Wincor Next Door. It's a retail industry where you buy some item, you enter the cash and the bill will come out. Okay, So, so we, we try to automate that process, uh, reduce the, the, the time spent on this process by Developing an application uh, using Romobile, and this one is again uh, Android. And you can see this is a Samsung Samsung uh, tab tablet. Okay, so we deployed it on that one as well as on Android ET one, and and then uh, basically what it does is like uh, if, if you buy some item, you press abort or total or pay, it will talk with the web services if required, record the uh, transaction, and so on. So that's one example. Okay. <clears throat> I have a question. So, does it? Uh, so, if you look at phone gap or any other uh, similar uh, framework, so it all supports those plugins and all other cool features, wherein I can extend the basic functionalities by that platform. So, uh, in Pro Mobile, also can we write plugins or uh, I mean extend the functionality which is provided by the the basic framework? Yes, there is a there is a scaffold or like a template generation that helps you to write your own extensions. So let's say uh, we face this problem for one of our application, we are able to find the solution. Uh, the default camera feature provided by Romobile is not so uh, useful for us. So we are trying to write our own extension where you would write Objective-C code, Android code, uh, C, C++ code and so on. So how, how you install is basically 
you would install uh, roads by saying gem install roads you would set it up like road setup what this does is uh, it will create a link to your iphone simulator link to your android simulator or uh, sdk sorry sdk iphone sdk android sdk blackberry windows and, and windows phone and then if you want to create a new application all you have to do is uh, roads app the sample sprightly roads app something like that um, so you create a template for the corresponding platform. Yeah, like, like this template. Okay. So you get to see uh, a template like this, which has uh, app being icon public. Mm. Some of you who have used Ruby on Rails would, would might might relate this like a public folder app and so on. Uh, and then you you have this helpers, a model, some settings, app is which is again a model and then things and so on. Uh, they, I mean, uh, it, it's basically based on MVC uh, framework or uh, pattern. So this is how it is like. Let's say there is a product. Okay, that product has a model called product.rb where you can go and define your own. Uh, if you wish, you can write your own business logic here as well. But that's not happening, which is the best practice in Ruby on Rails platform. But most of the logics are written in product controller. So this one is controller and restore all is like views. So here you can see something different like edit.erb and edit.bb.erb. For Blackberry alone, it's preferred to have a different uh, separate view uh, because of the HTML, CSS compatibility issue. So uh, for one project, we went and created edit.wm.erb because we thought it's better we create a separate view for Windows Mobile as well. Um, so if you want to run, uh, let's say you have uh, written a simple project and if you want to run that application, basically you would say like a rake run dot run Android, rake run iPhone, run Blackberry, Windows Mobile, win, uh, Windows Phone and so on. So if you just do that, then uh, the emulator will pop up it will automatically install the application in your emulator and then uh, simulator and then uh, and then you get to see the application running okay so for example for android development you would be creating the dot apk file placing the place the dot apk file so it, it when you do this it, it will automatically touch that's that process to get to get for testing um, maybe the screen is very small but i'll try to explain <coughs> uh, some of the device capabilities includes like uh, GPS which is very important and then you can access your phone contacts, calendar um, and then you have camera, barcode. You, some of you who have used iPhone would see a different date time ticker like uh, yeah so something like that. Uh, those are available, menu, toolbar, signature, uh, most of them is available. Uh, if you see this line uh, which says NFC, uh, Android is Android, <coughs> they support NFC for Android 3.0 operating system, uh, but they, they are also targeting uh, something with the, with the uh, Windows Phone as well, which is not public yet. Uh, so that's, that's something going on. Okay, so actually, if you see, uh, you, you asked one question about extension. So if you want, if there is some native capability of your mobile and if you want to extend it then there is a, there is some folders that you have to follow and just develop it. Uh, what sets apart uh, no mobile from, uh, uh, from 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 phone cap is this this platform. Basically uh, I'll tell you one scenario where you 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 can relate why no mobile is different from phone cap. Let's say you are running a uh, okay, Lips Lift company, Lift service company, uh, or you, you, you are having a heating system, a refrigerator, uh, a lift, and everything. You are running a big company, and you have at least five thousand service engineers uh, who will be going around India to 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 do some work and so on. What they have to do is, the moment they wake up in the morning, they need to know what work they have to do. 
okay if i am in chennai i need to know whether i should go to adayar or madapalli or something like that so the first thing i will do in the morning is i will take my mobile and then i do like how you check your email you say either a auto refresh or check email or something like that you take the mobile and press sync or like get my new jobs then what it does is it will go and talk to the packet and get all the data for you okay let's say you have 5000 users then 5000 users would be clicking the check button probably between 7 to 9 am in the morning so this backend synchronization offline data access is that's the main thing that sets pro mobile apart from other 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 uh, framework and then you can integrate basically uh, you can integrate with almost uh, all famous uh, backend systems like oracle uh, crm uh, uh, sugar crm salesforce uh, microsoft .net java i mean they, they have a spring based java uh, adapter and so on so let's say you, most of the time if you talk to big companies they they would not they would be they are they would be very happy to running their legacy system i mean if you see even java is now some of the old java is jsp server based application or or like a legacy system they don't want to touch it but they would be saying like okay can you write some adapters that would just run on my system and provide a mobile interface that's that's the requirement that we always face so when you face like that this would be one option okay uh, let's go with the demo <coughs> so i already showed you this jquery mobile fx let me try to show you uh demo because if i have to clean and run it it's going to take a lot of time so are these things about the you are they are available as demo software it's available and we we just modified it modified it a bit most of almost all demos are available on github Open source. Oh, I missed that point. Uh, Row mobile, Row Connect, it's all open source. All available on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me try to show some code. Uh, so basically, if you see this, uh, I have clicked here. Barcode recognizer. This is the model uh, which is including some ROM and so on, which which I don't want to explain now. Basically, this is a model. and this is the controller and <coughs> the controller got the code uh okay if you if you see this uh, i'll show the demo right right now uh, barcode dot barcode recognize something is saying okay so it is it's the standard api that you have to just use in order to read the barcode so i'm running a i'm running a simple application and here you can see some barcode and then i'm going to click the scan button which should alert me like 7181 uh, and at which and it is shown so i do that and then you get to see uh, the barcode over here and basically what that means what i what i'm trying to show here is maximum three or four lines to do this process okay same with phone gaps uh, phone gap also maybe like one or two lines and and then 
uh, here, here, what what we have done is basically we we get the image uh, and relate it. We we get the image. Okay, the image is over here, and then we added like a picture URL for action scan to scan. So basically, <coughs> we are just. This is scan one, scan two, scan three. Like uh, scan one, scan two, and then when I click the scan, it goes and calls my controller, uh, similar to Rails, and then it, it does the it, it does the recognition. So that's one demo. Um, <coughs> the next one, just want to quickly show is. Just to pull up the iPhone, I am saying like rake run iPhone. So while it while it build, uh, what what I am trying to show here is simply uh, a Twitter consuming a Twitter. Okay, so. There is an index method or an action that would that would uh, take the URL uh, call the take the URL <coughs> of the Twitter like API dot Twitter dot com. Uh, if you have used URL uh, JSON URL and then make an asynchronous HTTP request and just display the data. Okay, so that that's what that code is. Just two two lines and then let's see. Uh, here is the tweet. Uh, basically, it's it's listing all the tweets from. Uh, tweet from the uh, sprightly sprightly Twitter. Uh, I want to show something else, so let us keep on dynamically testing it. Just just it's showing what the latest tweet is. Okay. Uh, okay. There is one more application that we have done, uh, which is uh, changebadtogood.com. Uh, I would be very happy if you guys contribute for this. Uh, we will be making this app open source uh, in a week time. What it basically does is, this is the map of Chennai, uh, which which got the Google map. Another example that you can integrate Google map in Pro Mobile and, and things like that, along with GPS capability. So, there is a map which got some uh, pointers, maybe. So I forgot. So if you select this damage in rain and, and things like that, so what it does is uh, it shows you a map and then it shows you where the photoed is, where the damaged road is, where the garbage is left, and so on. Okay. So this is a web application as well as a mobile application. Uh, so we, for a typical application, you would have a login, registration, and doing. Uh, posting an issue and so on. So to do this all, it took us only two weeks actually to develop this mobile application. Okay, with, with, while we were learning as well. Uh, so if you just see the code, like uh, you see, you are writing a HTML input type equal to text, and then and then you get the form elements and so on. Okay, and then uh, so so. And then, and then, okay. There is one more, one more thing. Like post an issue. If you say post an issue, what it will does is, uh, you, you, let's say you have your iPhone or Android. You you take it, you take a picture, right? So if, to to post an issue. So you can click post an issue. And then what it does is, it it take picture like camera, take picture, and that's it. The object is there, and you 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 start processing it. So it's all like two three lines to get things done. Uh, so that's that's the basic. Basic of uh, Roam Mobile, uh, along with along with jQuery Mobile. Why, why, why is that uh, Yahoo is open open it? Facebook or Yahoo or Gmail application? Why do people need to register if you are making a open application? Oh, okay. Uh, you can have open ID access, right? What? Right. Uh, we have been successful on using what with the Facebook. 
so which is which we just found a couple of days back this is like a side project for us uh, but i take your point yeah so uh, what so, is what's oh, the what, I, oh. what i'm confused about is how rails what you should be looks like rails code right and how that integrates with this framework in terms of it's like is your assets compiled into html which is shown on the thing or is it still very server dependent and uh, you have to post the code on their server or whatever I am not sure about your question, but uh, uh, you write HTML JavaScript Ruby, then it compiles to Objective C package. Does that answer your question? Uh, well, what have how how do you can you go with the Ruby code? Is how, yeah. how how goes with the Ruby code? How deep can you go with the Ruby code? Oh, okay. Uh, the if you if you if you want to write your own Ruby gem to consume a SOAP based web services. Then you write your own gem, put it in the roads app folder, and then you 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 have it. And you okay, that's a good question. Uh, just for rendering, for showing some views and so on. When you start writing your extension, you have to write it in Objective C or Java or the native languages. So the deepness of Ruby is like, for example, date time. Is there any server dependency? Can I can I after I compile? Is there? Do I have to deploy the application somewhere, or can I run my own server as is? Uh, see, for we have a server component which is good, but what if I don't want to use their server component? I'm not sure about your question on server. Basically, okay, I'm done with my presentation, yeah, so, so we can go and see. Yeah. What he's saying is, when you you have a development environment, then you have a packaged output. Yes. Okay. The compiled output. If it is iPhone app, the technical iPhone app, you cannot deploy. It has to be in the iPhone store and that you download it from there. That's to run. So is it going to be HTML5, JS, strictly CSS, JS5 compliant thing? Or does the, let's say if you are deploying a dedicated enterprise deployment built on Roam Mobile, okay. will it run on any Tomcat kind of stuff or that requires uh, backend okay. Ruby? No, no, I, 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 I mod PHP, mod Python, mod Ruby in the beginning. No. Okay, you, you, you create iPhone app, you create Android app. The yeah, final, the final compiled file. So, like you said, you put it on App Store or your private. Okay, logically a private App Store or private Android marketplace. No, okay. The the main thing is phone gap. It's, it's a very clear listing. Once you generate a file, you just put HTML files there. You don't have any Ruby compilation step. No, there is no Ruby compilation. Even with phone gap, you generate a .dot apk file. .dot apk file. Exactly, and that's deployed. With mobile, that's you do the same. That's it. So there's no server dependence. No server dependence. I'm not sure why you are relating server dependency. Maybe because we can talk about what, what do you put? Looks oh. like they are no, no, Ruby. Ruby. We are not talking about Rails, yeah. right? Okay. No, the code you showed looks a lot like Rails. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's where the thing comes. Oh, okay. Fine. It takes a picture, right? Yeah. Uh, is it possible to scale the picture before we upload it, or is it possible to set like cropping and, yeah, and things okay. like that? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. If you want to do this cropping or uh, all this thing, you you go with native apps because Roam Mobile or Phone Gap are trying to address corporate level mobile applications. Okay, uh, because. Your requirement will keep on changing. No, like, it, it's okay. still a compiled application. I mean, it, it's a it's an application. So the camera capability, everything comes into the application. So is it possible? To you can, you can. Picture? You have at the end you will write the objective C. You won't be writing the row mobile because row mobile will just give the camera object to it, the blob okay. object. Uh, how do you go about debugging your app? Like uh, the, you have a WinRay or a WebKit debugging system for a phone gap or other platform stuff. How do you go about and go? About it? Uh, I, uh, okay, there is something called a row simulator where you know Firebug? Something equivalent to Firebug is available. So, uh, actually, it's a Firebug. Uh, sorry, that was. So, what about the uh, database targeting? Is there any ORM or any or user? Okay, it uses something called ROM or HOM, which connect to the SQLite database when it comes to iPhone and Android. And then, if you want to connect to SQL Server or Oracle or something, then you would be either using uh, API or web services to, to to do that operation. Uh, could you use yes. a mic if you don't mind? It's <laughs> right there.
Does it support HTML5? That's your question, right? Uh, no. <coughs> no, no. I mean, iPhone for iPhone, yes, but not uh, for iPhone and for Android, yes, but not not fully, not like phone cap. So it simulates the browser, right? Yes, it uses the browser. Uh, for phone gap, sorry, for uh, iPhone and Android, it uses WebKit browser. I'm not sure about BlackBerry and so on, but it, it, it does use the browser capability of the mobile. Okay, so what's the complete ecosystem to develop the application on this one? Uh, okay, um, Ruby, and then uh, that's it, Ruby. Yeah. So, I mean, let's say you are ta targeting an application for eBay, then other things will come around like database and so on. Ruby. Yeah. Can you hold your mic? Yeah, so how do you write tests like R spec or something like that? And there is something called M spec for this one, which is not so good like R spec. Uh, R spec is really good, but with the M spec, you can do view and integration plus controller testing, but I'm it. I'm not fully confident on that. I'm trying to find a good example so that I can say if it, uh, if it does support unit testing. For, formally, they do support unit testing. Uh, have you done any application with real time delivered? So, what uh, ha have I done any? Yes, real time application which you delivered. Uh, I showed you four examples, right? One with the WinCar next door. Another with a company called Maxter, they are all real time application. Yes. Is it possible to skip some of the HTC apps within Google uh, Maps? What I'm trying to do is, uh, if it is it possible? I mean, uh, HTC. HTC no, the HTC comes with a location application. Basically, what if I don't want to use Google Maps? Instead, I want to use a native uh, application. <coughs> Uh, HTC downloads your whole map into it. Okay. I don't want to use bandwidth right now. Right okay, there. so your question is question is basically can I use some mobile specific native yeah. future? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can. If it, if the support is not already there, you have to write your own. For example, Microsoft is having their own map. Uh, I mean, it's not using Google Map. So it does, Romobile does support that. Because at the end, Microsoft Map is based on JavaScript, so you have to just use that, something like that. Uh, okay, one point I want to say is, uh, if you've got some smartphone ideas, please go and visit sprightly.com slash community uh, and post, uh, there is a link called submit ideas for smartphone application. We will develop it for free, put it as an open source, we will use Omobile. If you like the idea, we will develop, put it, and put it as an open source. We have already received like at least 10, 8, 8 tall ideas. We started with 2, we will be finishing it in a week. Uh, why we are doing this? Uh, honestly, uh, to share the knowledge. Uh, um, we believe in open source like you all, and we just want to spread the knowledge and so on. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's all from my topic today. Uh, maybe I have. Five more minutes? Uh, Two more minutes. Yeah. Any question? So what does that change back to good test? You take a photo then it sends it to somewhere or? Uh, what does it does is it, it displays the photo on the changebacktogood.com website and then it shows you like uh, in Chennai you can count one lakh photos and one lakh damage roads and so on. The next step we are going to take is talk to the local mayors like uh, Chennai mayor, Bangalore mayor, Rotary club, uh, Lions club and so on and try to take it as a next step. Okay, this is a social initiative actually and nothing to do with Romobile but just to show you uh, an application in, uh, that is that is being there. Uh, see basically uh, Romobile converts Ruby to Objective C and native code. Uh, are there any limitations like okay this will work in Ruby but it won't work in uh, uh, Objective C or you know, like that. Are there any features or any commands in Ruby which you want to work in native language? Yes, that, that's a good question. For example, Chronic. Uh, Chronic. Chronic is a gem, right? That can display some. Uh, that that is not supported. Okay. So they have the <coughs> limited version of date time object. Sorry, date time library. Okay. So because they want to reduce the, they don't want to take the complete Ruby 1.9. They took a subset of Ruby 9 for Ruby 1.9. And then they created this one. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. I have one question. 
So why do you want to go for native uh, occupancy finally? Because anyway we are going to use it in browser and just we are uh, going to type the URL, right? So finally we want to no, use no, no, the no, no, browser. Browser. Yeah. 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 Okay, then what is the URL? Uh, see, this is a website. Okay. And this is a, this is a, there is a web application and there is a mobile application as okay. well. So you you can access it. Okay. Okay. I'll move this slide. So, so, you, so you use a mobile app to connect to the web. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yes. So, so this is Okay. All right, that's uh, time's up. So let's thank him for a wonderful talk.